Hi, welcome back to Plant Life Project. I'm Andrew, and today's video is part two of how to build a beginner house planted fish tank called a riparium. In part one, I showed you step by step how to build the riparium. Well, today we're going to take a look at how the setup is doing now. How are the plants doing? What are some adjustments that I've made? And we'll also talk about how to approach water changes. In the first video, I told you that I'm giving this riparium to someone. So we'll transfer this setup to its new home and also talk about fish. What are some ideal fish species for this size riparium? Well, I'm gonna give you five different kinds that I would recommend. And make sure you stick around for the end of the video because we're gonna take a look at my greenhouse and the progress that's being made on that. So here we are about a month after the build and the first thing that I notice is the lack of root development on the neon, excuse me, the neon pothos cuttings. It's not a huge concern. Uh, tropical plants are slow to root this time of year, especially if you don't have a heater in the aquarium. So I'm going to transfer these cuttings to my 30 gallon tank, which does have a heater, as well as other cuttings that have rooted. So that should help this neon pothos along. Well, the purple waffle plant and the phytonia have had some leaf dieback, which is normal during the transition, but they also have new leaves emerging, so I think we are on the right track. I did thin out the parlor palms a good bit, and man, the peace lily hasn't even been phased. It has not had any dieback and is throwing out new leaves, such an adaptable adaptable plant which makes it such a great riparium option. Well, I gave this riparium to my younger son Garrett and it is now home to his betta fish blue. And we put uh, four guppy fry in there with him so he would have company or snack food. Time will tell which they become. And we gave the riparium some balls Marimo moss balls, that is. <laughs> There's Blue swimming around. He's really happy. We also transferred his uh, little coral hut from his previous tank. So now he is right at home. And how about that uh, trophy light? Is that cool or what? I didn't want to build something to hold the lamp, so I looked through the closet and found the trophy, and voila. I ended up re removing the driftwood because it turned out to not be fully cured, and it was getting slimy and fouling the water. Um, and of course, you know, the day after that I buy those uh, moss balls, I find a video by Rachel O'Leary informing me of the current problem of zebra mussels being transported in the moss and invading people's aquariums and clogging waterways etc so uh, i haven't seen any of the zebra mussels yet but i am going uh, to keep a close eye and make sure that these uh, moss balls stay in this tank only and uh, hopefully we can find out sooner or later whether there is a, a cause for concern or not. So what about some other fish besides bettas and guppies that would work well for this size tank? Well, five nano tank species that I would recommend are Neon Tetra, Endler's Live Bearers, White Cloud Mountain Minnow, Celestial Pearl Daño and Harlequin Rasboros. These are small fish that can be kept in reasonable size numbers for this size riparium. Well, cherry shrimp and snails would also work well in this setup, but whatever you do, please do not put a goldfish in this riparium. They need 20 to 30 gallons per fish in order to be healthy, have some room to grow, and not drive you crazy with water changes. Well, speaking of water changes, how often should you change the water in this riparium? 
Well, my goal is always to minimize water changes as much as possible. And to make that realistic, you need to keep a small bio load or a small number of inhabitants relative to the amount of water you have in your tank. And you need lots of plants to help you filter out those excess nutrients produced by the fish waste. There's definitely a balance you have to find over time. And using a water test kit will really help you gauge how often those water changes are needed especially when your riparium setup is new and not yet balanced. When you first introduce the fish, you will likely have to do weekly water changes until the denitrifying bacteria and the plants can keep up with processing the waste from the fish. You definitely do not want a buildup of ammonia or nitrates and the test kit and water changes will help you avoid that. A good rule of thumb is to change about 25% of the water weekly for the first four weeks. And then you should be able to start reducing the water changes incrementally as your plants are growing and balance is being achieved. You can adjust this schedule according to your water test results. Well, building a riparium and watching it grow and develop can really challenge us to learn more about the ecosystems that are constantly at work around us that we often forget about or take for granted. And it can be so rewarding to achieve balance in a riparium system and watch it operate as a living system with little outside assistance from us. Well, finally, let's check out the greenhouse uh, this is a shelter logic greenhouse in a box and it has taken me about three months to get it to this point just due to weather indecision motivation or lack thereof uh, and i'm still trying to decide about the layout exactly i've got one long table and uh, i guess a bench i could use it for still trying to decide about the back wall over there i'll probably do a plant rack for hanging baskets and also about whether or not to set up two stock tank ponds or whether I should make one long, like 10 foot by two foot, just rectangular, you know, above ground raised pond. So still trying to figure all that out, but uh, there it is. Please make sure that you're subscribed to this channel so that you can stay up to date on the latest plant life projects. And I look forward to seeing you next time. And remember, it's all about the plants.